Hi, uh, welcome to the presentation about uh, section translation. Uh, my name is Amira Aroni. I'm the senior strategist in the language team of the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, this presentation will uh, also be uh, shared by me with uh, Pao Jiner, who is the uh, designer and the product manager, and by uh, Nick Gudas, uh, who is uh, one of our software developers. So we'll talk about section translation, which is a new feature, but we first need to understand why are we doing this at all and uh, what is the history of this feature. So language is a very central thing in the Wikimedia movement. Uh, we have a lot of languages. We are one of the most multilingual sites online. And uh, language is, in a way, knowledge itself. That's how we communicate to each other in a lot of languages. But it can also be a gatekeeper. It can be a blocker. because. If knowledge is encoded in a language you don't speak, and it's not translated to your language, it's not available in your language, then you don't have it. So uh, just as a very simple example, which should be familiar to a lot of you, the English Wikipedia is the largest. It has way over 6 million articles. The second biggest is uh, German. Uh, German has more than 2 million articles, uh, even though uh, much fewer people speak the German language. Uh, than, for example, Indonesian. Uh, Indonesian uh, is spoken by more people than German, but it has uh, just over half a million articles. Bengali, which is also the uh, world's uh, top 10 language, uh, has even fewer than 100,000 articles. So that's a bit of a problem, uh, which we are trying to address. And our, our way to address this since 2015 uh, is a feature that many of you may have heard of, and that's content translation. Content translation is uh, an extension for, for Wikipedia, which allows people to create articles by translating them from another language. So this is how content translation currently looks like on desktop computers. You see an article in the source language uh, on one side of the screen, and then you see initially empty space for writing a new article in your language by translating, them, by translating this article from another language. What content translation gives you is you see both languages at once. Uh, it's convenient for translators to see and compare each paragraph. It also helps you adapt images and links and templates and categories and similar things. So it's fairly successful. Uh, we have more than 900,000 articles created uh, in all the languages. and uh, we even think that uh, it's quite high quality. Uh, I'm trying to be modest here. Uh, as a very simple measurement of quality, we can see that uh, around 3% of articles created by content translations are deleted, which is compared to an average of 12% uh, of new articles uh, deleted uh, if they are not created using content translation. So uh, for a uh, tool that creates articles, uh, how many articles are deleted is a simple measure of quality. By this measurement, we think that we're pretty good. However, we also have some limitations. Content translation is far from perfect. Uh, so a big issue in content translation is that it only allows you currently to create uh, complete new articles. However, uh, it's only for the first revision of the article. Content translation currently doesn't help you very much in expanding or improving or correcting the article. Uh, and you can see that the length and the quality of articles is quite different from one language to another. Uh, this is, for the, for example, the article about the T-Rex uh, in Hindi. Hindi is one of the biggest, most spoken languages of the world. And you can see that it only has two paragraphs of text and an info box and four references. That's, that's not much, because Infobox is, you know, it's nice, but the English Wikipedia article, it has much, much more. The Russian Wikipedia is also much longer. So this is not enough. Uh, it would be nice to have a longer, more complete, uh, better reference, better illustrated article in Hindi. And another big issue is that Content translation is very much built for desktop and laptop computers, not so much for mobile phones. And, you know, we used to say that the future is mobile, but it's not the future. It's already the present. Already now we know that in all the languages, most of the reading is done on mobile phones. More in some languages, uh, less in some others, but in pretty much all the languages, all the reading in Wikipedia is done on mobile phones. And that's why we need uh, something new 
to support mobile phones better. And this is where I uh, transfer to speak about the, the present and the future to the designer, uh, Paul Giner. Thanks, Amir. And yes, uh, Amir was mentioning some of the current limitations of content translation inspired the next phase of the project, uh, which we call section translation, which is not as much a, a new tool, but more of an expansion of the capabilities of content translation. If we think of the initial scope of content translation being focused on desktop and being used for creating new articles, with section translation, we want to expand those capabilities uh, to support mobile for both creating and expanding articles, but also support that expansion of articles on, on desktop. Or initial scope, um, here, um, the, the initial scope will be on expanding articles on mobile, and now we are also covering creating articles on mobile, and that's what can be tested right now with the current implementation, but before we go there, uh, I wanted to cover a bit on the journey of what we have done so far, because the tool uh, started to in the process of, of being designed and researched before uh, we started implementing it. So there was a, a process of, of research that was led by Eli, uh, or researcher working with the, team, with the language team, uh, that started to validate that the concept of translating uh, sections on mobile was uh, a successful and, and valuable concept, um, making uh, proof of concept and evaluating how that worked, getting feedback with the initial implementations, and finally releasing into a, a real Wikipedia, in this case, Bengali Wikipedia, uh, an early version that we did also usability testing to, to learn from. Uh, some of the details of the, of the learning from the, the early concept testing was about validating the core assumptions, and we realized that editors were perceiving valuable, uh, the possibility of expanding articles um, by adding new sections and doing that on, on mobile was perceived as an easy and fast activity. And we also identify areas to keep uh, researching and learning from. Here you can see on the, on the right side some quotes about some of the, of the participants, how they um, validated some of our assumptions about users that are mobile only that were previously left out of, of these processes. Um, additional research was based on the proof of concept and early feedback on the initial technical implementation. And we were also getting um, both positive um, feedback and ideas to, to improve the tool. And more recently, after having a, an initial version available in Bengali Wikipedia, we were doing usability testing on, on it to um, validate that those ideas that were testing positive were in fact received also uh, positively when applied to real articles and real data. Obviously, as an early implementation, we identify aspects to, to improve, like supporting search, uh, better pla placing the sections that were published in the, in the right place in the article. Uh, yeah, and some other aspects that we have been improving since, and most of them are already available in the new version. Um, and yeah, talking about the future, we are also thinking of the next steps for section translation. Um, an immediate one is to enable the tool on more Wikipedias. So if this seems an interesting tool for your wiki because there's a lot of mobile editing or mobile activity on the wiki, you can give it a try at test.m.wikipedia.org and special content translation. It's the mobile version of content translation is where we are surfacing this new, new version of section translation. And in, yeah, if that's interesting, you can contact the team and we will consider your wiki as one of the next ones. Um, we are also exploring the possibility of enable more, enabling more entry points so that people can find the tool. Obviously, uh, remembering the previous URL is not the best way to find the tool, and currently there are not many more, but we will start 
as we improve the tool, making it easier to find. And we will be expanding existing possibilities to, to translate, like better suggestions or um, translating an article when you identify that it's missing on a specific language to more experimental ones where we can surface some of these missing sections and let people um, create them when they are missing in, in stub articles, for example. We are also exploring further the matching translation field. Um, we, earn, we want to, to learn more about how users edit matching translation and which is the perception of quality and the need for improving it in order to support really good quality, the creation of really good quality uh, translations based on uh, how editors improve the initial matching translation. And we also experimented in a few languages to integrate an open source neural matching translation system to, um, to provide matching translation to underserved languages that didn't have matching translation before. This is experimental. It's not a high quality um, translation service right now because it depends on open uh, data available, but it does an interesting thing, which is closing the loop with content translation where the more translations you produce, the more content is shared in this open corpus of, of knowledge and um, it helps to train better the system. And yeah, finally, we, we have time for a demo if you were curious to see how section translation works in practice. And for that, uh, Nick can, can show you. Thank you, Paul. So now it's time for a little demo and together we'll try to translate a section and publish it to a target article. So uh, let me share my screen and... Here, as you can see, this is the dashboard of our application. It's this, this is the section translation application. And uh, here are some uh, suggestions for the users to uh, either create new articles or expand already existing articles by translating sections. And uh, all these suggestions are perfectly valid, but uh, I'm going to choose uh, an article of my preference and uh, I'll have to check uh, to click at this button. But before that, that uh, I'm about to change the target article. Here is the language selector um, where user can uh, update the source or the target language. And I'm planning to select Bengali language as the target language because this is the only wiki that uh, section translations has been uh, deployed as of now. And uh, I'm continuing to search for my preferred article. And this is the Sun article. So I'm uh, clicking on it. And this is a screen where the user can uh, confirm that uh, they are going to uh, translate an article from this uh, section from this specific article. And uh, here are some information about the missing sections and uh, the availability of this article in Bengali language. Uh, I'm going on to click on this button. And this is the, the screen where users can uh, select uh, the section that they are going to translate and publish. And I'm going to go with the first one, of course, and it's uh, the general characteristics. And uh, this is a screen where a user can compare the contents between the section in English and the full article in Bengali language. And uh, as you can see, here are the contents of uh, this section. And uh, on the other hand, we have the whole article in Bengali language. Uh, somewhere at the bottom of this page, we can check just above uh, the first appendix uh, title, appendix section, sorry. Uh, this is where our new section will be published, and this placeholder is here to indicate it. So I'm going, going to go to do the translate button, and uh, this is a quick tutorial users uh, can see, and uh, with some quick information about how it works. I'm just going to skip it for now. I'm quite familiar with it by now. So um, here is the actual pay, the actual screen where users can translate uh, sentence by sentence the whole section, and uh, starting from the section title. Um, here is the this card is where the suggested translation is uh, provided, 
and uh, we can even select a, a different machine the translation provider like uh, Google Yandex or even start with an empty sentence. For now, Google it's fine for me. And uh, I'm going to go just uh, by uh, apply the proposed uh, translation for the title. Um, as you can see, the untranslated sentences are highlighted with a, a yellow color, while already translated uh, segments are highlighted with a light blue color. And here are some statistics about our translation. Uh, uh, since I didn't do any change, uh, no edits made uh, by me. So I'm going on here and uh, try to edit this translation, but uh, I'm not really familiar with the Bengali language. So I'm just going to remove some of the content. And again, I can check that uh, 45, 47% edited by me at this point. I'm going on to apply the suggested translation for a few more sentences. And once uh, I feel that I am ready to uh, publish this uh, section and the translation is complete, I'm just uh, clicking on the done button. So this is the last screen where user uh, actually confirms the publication and uh, has the chance to review uh, for the last time the contents of the section. And uh, I'm going to publish the section as it is for now. And you can see that uh, we cannot do that because the translation contains too much uh, unmodified text. And this is something uh, that is expected uh, to me because machine translation is never perfect and the user should always uh, modify it a little bit. So I'm going on to mod modify the section. This is my the last opportunity. And uh, after doing this, I can continue with publishing it again. And uh, this time I expect it to be successful. Let's see, there is, uh, yeah. It was successful, and now we are redirecting to the target article where the new section uh, is going to be published. This is the target article. But, uh, here is the new section uh, with uh, highlighted with the yellow color to indicate that this is new and also this indicator and uh, at the bottom of the screen here are the contents that uh, I have uh, translated and at the bottom of the screen we can see these two banners uh, that uh, indicate that the new, new section was added and also is the, uh, here is an invitation uh, for the user to go on and translate more sections for this article I'm going to click it and uh, we are redirecting back to section translation application. And specifically to the Sun article, and this is again the confirm the translation uh, screen, and uh, that will uh, close the loop. So I could uh, go on and translate another section here. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed. Back to you, Paul. Okay, thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, if, if anyone is interested in learning more about section translation, there is a, there's a, a Wikimedia page where you can learn about the project, track the progress and, and basically learn more about what's going on with it. And it, this is just one of the different projects that the language team uh, has been working on. So if you're also interested on uh, learning more about the work of the team, um, which uh, part of it is in the picture, but we have even some more uh, folks. Uh, joining since the picture was taken, uh, feel free to contact us at the MediaWiki uh, 
uh, Wikimedia Language Engineering. And yeah, thanks for your your attention, and uh, we are looking forward always for for feedback and questions.